I'm the president of SafeHeart USA, and uh, today we're going to talk to you about our new product, the iOximeter. So, so let me get a show of hands. How many people have heard of a pulse oximeter or know what that is? Well, that, that's, that's almost 10 times more than I thought. Wow. Okay, well, for the rest of you, here's a brief lesson. So an, an oximeter is a device that tells you your heart rate and your blood oxygen saturation level. So as we all know, we need oxygen to survive. So if you've been to a hospital or if you've taken a sleep study or if you have a lung condition, You've probably seen one of these. It's, it's what's known as a tabletop pulse oximeter. So, what happened is, in 1972, two Japanese scientists found that by shining lights of two different frequencies and measuring the absorption of that through the skin, you can measure the blood oxygen level. So, that's how an oximeter works. So, a sensor shines two lights using LEDs, and then there's a sensor on the other side that sends the data to the tabletop unit. So let's see what we can improve on that. What if instead of a tabletop unit, let's use a smartphone? And that's how we came up with this idea, the Oximeter. So a software program for the Android and iPhone. So how did we make the Oximeter the way that we made it? Well, this is a story I like to call, what I don't like about smartphone accessories. Well, every few years, cell phone companies keep coming out with these new ports. So it used to be 30 pin, now it's lightning, there's micro USB. Who knows what they're going to come up with next? I don't want to have to keep buying new accessories or adapters every time I get one. And then chargers. Okay, so I was in London last week, and I left my cell phone charger in the hotel. So, so that's two bad things that happened to me. I caught a cold when I was there, and I had to buy a new charger for my phone. And there are wellness apps out there right now that do use the proprietary port that I talked about earlier. The problem is, what if you want to use that and charge your phone at the same time? Well, you can't, so there's no way to monitor continuously. And the worst part is, some work for iPhone, and some work only work for Android. So what does the oximeter do? Well, it measures your heart rate and blood oxygen level. It's got alarms that can tell you if your values are too high or too low, and it can record <coughs> your measurements and chart them over time. So now, I'm gonna do a quick demo. Aaron here has uh, agreed to uh, Help me with the uh, the demo soon. So what's, what's happening right now is uh, it's calibrating to, uh, to her finger and it's uh, using four different types of filters to filter out the noise. Um, it's powered through the earphone jack and as it's doing that, it's reading the heart rate and the oxygen level. So now, let me tell you what I like about the oximeter. It uses the headphone jack, so you don't have to worry about proprietary ports. Let's, see, let's say you switch to Android next year or you get a new phone. Well, don't worry, because it'll come with a headphone jack. There's no batteries to use, and you don't have to have a charger either, because it's powered by the headphone jack. And you can charge your phone and use the accessory at the same time. So if you're doing an overnight monitor, let's say you have sleep apnea, want to figure out if, it's, if your you know, oxygen levels are dropping too low, you can do that. And the best of all, it works on Android and iOS. All right, so I have an iPhone right here. And we also have the same app available for iPhone. So that was a Samsung S4, and this is an iPhone, and we have these apps available right now. All right, so who's going to be our target customer? Well, obviously you've got the pilots, you know, because you don't want to black out when you're flying at high altitudes. You've got athletes, so if you're doing high altitude training or running for a marathon, then you can do that. Um, you can also, you know, mountaineers, you don't want to develop hypoxia when you're climbing at a high altitude, so you can use the oximeter with you whenever, wherever you go. And then finally, anyone who's interested in monitoring their vital signs can use this product as a way to, you know, measure your um, biometrics, not sorry, sorry your uh, parameters. So the oximeter, we're going to sell it for $79. It's, it's, yes, it's a price breakthrough. So vote for us.
at the Expand New York Engadget Conference that we'll be attending in uh, November 9th. And that's the website. And also you can follow us on Twitter or Facebook. already shows the heart rate. Um, if you want to see me afterwards, I can just give you a more close-up demo. I know I didn't have a way to mirror the uh, Android phone onto the TV. I know there's a way to do it, but I just couldn't figure it out by this, by this time. So, yes? So do you have a different interface for your first three target groups? Because it doesn't seem to me that pilots or Mary Connors or whatever, whatever third group was. Yes, you're actually right. Uh, we, are actually, we are actually working on not just the clip kind, we're also working on um, a Y sensor and also a ring style that you can click down here so that it's easier for you to uh, do that. Yes? Is this FDA approved? Yes, that is a good, that's a very good question. Um, because only recently in November did the FDA come out with the guidance on the wellness apps for medical use, we are now in the process of getting FDA clearance, um, which means it's a nine month process, which means that for now it's only available for the sports and aviation markets. But for if you want to get a doctor's prescription for it, you might have to wait until the third quarter of next year. How how are, what would be a list of the ways you would use it for a sleep apnea uh, patient? Well, uh, if you already have apnea, you're probably using, you're probably on a CPAP machine, right? Which uh, forces you to breathe when you're sleeping. Um, but to get diagnosed, you go to what's known as a sleep center to do that. Now you don't have to do that. Um, you don't have to do that anymore because you can use the oximeter to do your own sleep study at home. You can just you know, strap it to your hand while you're sleeping, and then you can record the results. Um, I can show you how that's done using the iPhone right here. Yes. Uh, do you have uh, IP on the uh, plug into to in essence the audio? Uh, actually, yes. We have uh, two different. Uh, Proprietary, proprietary information. One is the way that we are transmitting a huge amount of data through it because it's much faster, the much, 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 much more data than just a square, you know, credit card swipe. Um, and then the second one is how to reduce the power consumption because usually it requires at least 200 milliamps to operate a uh, oximeter sensor. This one only uses seven milliamps. So we're using different ways to, um, to pulse the power. Who's your biggest? Right now, uh, actually, we are actually talking to some, because of the Affordable Care Act, uh, we're actually talking to some insurance companies who are looking to add this to the apps that they, to, um, to so we're developing an API so that their platform can integrate with this and then they can use it for their telemedicine uh, initiatives so that they can reduce the doctor business because you get a lot more of them and that's going to cost money, so we're trying to reduce the price or reduce the overall cost. Yes? How does this compare to the whole quantified self product category of bases, Nike's coming out, Fitbit up, which all trying to kind of kind of give you? Yes, uh, actually, Nike Fuel, Fitbit, um, there's in this, they're in a similar category, but none of them measure blood oxygen saturation. So that's kind of where we're different. Um, so we're more towards um, wellness. If you, for example, if you're a smoker and you actually uh, have a lung condition or you you, you experience harder breathing then it's easier for you to use this product because those other products won't be able to diagnose or, or help you, you know, with just finding out what's going on. All right, yes sir? How does the accuracy compare to type of and things of that nature? Yes, actually it is exactly as accurate. Um, for our conference in New York, we're going to be bringing by a Nelcore machine, the one that you saw in the picture, the really ugly one. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. That, that was old and busted. This is the new hotness. Right? <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, actually, there are a couple of Bluetooth solutions out there. Um, the problem is, if you want to do overnight monitoring, they run out of power after like half an hour. So, because Bluetooth, I don't know about you, but it hogs the battery. So, and you have to charge it. And, and I already told you how much I hate having 10 chargers with me everywhere I go. So, <laughs> yes sir. Are you fully funded? Uh, yes, we are actually self-funded. So, we're just you know, doing this for fun. No, we want to make money. <laughs> Pretty funny guy. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. We're already we're in the process of manufacturing right now, so we're gonna have our hopefully have our first batch ready for our Kickstarter campaign, mm -hmm. which is launching on November the 11th. So you don't need money, or you do need money? Uh, 
I mean, the Kickstarter is really so we can get a lot of feedback from customers so that as we do our FDA process, we're going to be able to, um, to get all of the telemetry. So, any other questions? Actually, no more questions, sorry. I think there's last one. One more? Two, one. Okay, thank you.